Andrea. Yep. It's that time. Uh huh. That Critter Box time uh -huh. where we slide into the crux of this episode. We are discussing, as promised, with you, our viewers who have subscribed to us and those who are new. Welcome. Um, we've been watching the Penguin. <laughs> we were going. We're gonna watch the episode, each episode of Penguin, and we're going to talk about it. We have seen one. Mwah! We have uh, now seen two. Three has just come out yesterday, so we're late on two, but we get twos out. First thoughts on two. The Penguin, episode two. And you're going to let me get first? Do you want to go first? I can, I can start talking about it. You know what? Let me just set the, let me set the scene. Let me set the scene, okay? Okay, so episode one, burst onto the scene like a bat out of, like meatloaf on a motorcycle, bat out of hell. Um, a hit to hit you hard, hit you fast. A lot going on. Um, Kristen uh, Melody playing Sophia Falcone. Colin uh. Farrell playing Oswald Cobblepot slash Penguin. Um, Clancy Brown, uh, Renzi Phillies, Mark Strong, Carmen Iogo. Those are just the things that Google's showing me as the cast. Um, and so it came out hard and fast. Episode two. It was. I think it's too much expectation to say that episode two had to hit just as hard because as a guy who just went on a road trip, starting your road trip is amazing. You're like, yeah, we're doing this. Da -da 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 -da. Um, but then it's you get to a point where like, okay, maybe not every scenery you're passing by is exciting, but it's still great because you're going on the destination. I liked episode two because it felt like a bridge. It's like, hey, Episode one, here's the concept. Episode two, let's start, let's get moving. Let's start getting plans in motion. Let's get things, let's get things happening. A bridge in what sense? Um, a bridge as in it is setting up. And of course, obviously, spoiler warning, we're going to spoil some shit for you. This is him getting things in motion of like, okay, first episode, I was spinning plates because I'm trying to, you know, like, hey, like uh, uh, close uh, close off one end, open up this lane, trying to get this, trying to get this. Now he's like, I can get a plan moving in motion and i need assets i need allies for a hot second sophia falcone was about to gut him like a fish but then it took some work and took some finagling some convincing but now he's got a sophia falcone on his side that's what this bridge was where he can now start moving, getting things... Instead of putting out every fire in front of him, he can start looking a little bit farther down the road, have plans to, to get to things, whatever. He's not always trying to defend his life. He's, he can start moving forward. So you meant a bridge in character development as opposed to plot development. Yes, yes. Kind of like, I mean, it, it's... a. Uh, uh, not that episode two didn't have anything to offer. It's episode two is him starting to get things in motion. It's bridging to it's the, the, to some bigger or some bigger arc or, you know, um, story arcs to it. To become the penguin, basically. To become the penguin, yeah. Okay, I can it's see It's connecting you. to it. He's starting to get I, get things going. I can see you and I, okay, I, I'd bet on that. Yeah, what yeah. I liked about episode two and almost what I kind of didn't like about it as well as the same thing as horrible catch 22, but is okay. <clears throat> it's still <laughs> very, it's story heavy. It's acting heavy. It's theatrically and artistically beautiful. It's creative and you love the work that you know that each and every person in front of the camera and behind the scene has put into it. Yeah. It, it was made with tender, loving care. You can tell. But to me, as much as I love it. Yeah. I have to, I had to keep reminding myself as I was watching it, that this is about the penguin and a DC comic. Yeah. I was not getting that vibe at all. Not I'm at all. The only the only all. thing in that whole episode that reminds you that oh yeah, we're in a DC we're we're in Gotham. Fucking Batman's around. He exists, you know, like the, the one thing was whenever uh what was it that old beat up detective that Sophia hires as yeah. a private investigator, whenever yeah. he was like at the bar and he was giving shit to the bartender, he's like, You owe me and the guy's like, Take it up with the Riddler. 
And I was like, oh, oh yeah, God. we're she in bought, this world. She bought that. She bought him. She bought, and I can't believe they did the detective like that. What? Oh, that's did horrible. him dirty. Yeah. Oh my God, they made him a. Ugh. I need, I need drops. You got any drops? Need some drops? I need some drops. Give me some drops. <laughs> I was gonna, okay, fine. You, you already said it's gonna be a spoiler episode. There is very few references to DC Comics. There is very few references to Robin or Batman or anything of the like. And it really feels like a show that's moving away from DC because it's just so heavy on the organized crime activity. And yeah. it's just like, you understand that this is the Penguin's backstory, but you're just like, you're caught and it's good. Yeah. You're oh, yeah. Well, on the face of it, it's good. Colin Farrell's acting his ass off. Oh, my God, right. You're yes. kind of left wondering if you were in it for the DC comic book aspect. You're kind of left wondering, where is that? Because it's just not there. And this is yeah. actually kind of the same thing that Titans did, where it, be, it made it a much darker version of what the DC comic story was concerning Robin and Batman and... and um those characters mm -hmm. but they were still in superhero outfits with penguin there's no superhero outfits mm -mm. there's no, there's no flying there's no flying men there's no powers he ain't got no utility belt <laughs> he no luckily utility. had a switchblade no on him and that switchblade got him out of some shit but he there's luckily had that on him there's no pals or whams. <laughs> <laughs> There's no moral code he has to follow or whatever. He's like, no, nah, man, I need to finagle my way out of this situation and get into the next one. You know, <laughs> it's, it's literally automatic weapons and drugs. That's what we have. You know, Uzi and a switchblade were the star <laughs> roles of this of episode two. Okay, those were clutch for him in that <laughs> episode. Okay, and, and his he, wits. And it's just so graphic because he's sitting there with literal blood on his face. Yeah, at the beginning of the episode, at the top of the episode. Mm -hmm. So Dana Falcone is having flashbacks, really graphic flashbacks and vivid flashbacks of being in the asylum. And by the end of the episode, he's throwing his the young after he introduces the, um, his young protege to some working girls. He's throwing him in a freaking open grave with dead bodies. Like this is so far removed from from comic. This, you don't ever see Batman like like uh, like threatening to just bury someone. Well, actually, no, he does threaten to do it, but he won't. Well, you know, he won't because he's got a code, right? You, Penguin ain't got a code. But could Batman? Okay, but could they get? Could, could the makers of this series get away with Batman threatening to throw somebody in the power, being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna break your face." Like, could they break the back Batman shell of being a good guy and be like, "Yo, just throw Batman off a freaking cliff"? Like, if they were to make a series about Batman, could they do it like in such an organized crime fashion as they're telling them about the paint? Oh hell no, no 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 no! You couldn't get anywhere like this because it's different different sides of the coin. What we're getting is like this is the darkness of Gotham. You're getting into the gritty. This is what a regular person who doesn't have money has to do to survive in Gotham, and that's what Penguin is, and it's beautiful. And then he still takes care of his mama. Okay. That was a heartfelt thing of like, clearly she was spacing, whatever. The neighbor called him, was like, hey, man, look, I just caught her outside. And she's like, she doesn't know where she is, whatever. So she's dealing with this and then he has to go see her. And then he put, puts on a little jazz record and, you know, starts dancing around and she you know, lights up and everything. And that was a beautiful, heartfelt moment that you got involved with. And then, boom, cut back to him literally going to the funeral of the guy he killed and framed somebody else to cover up for. And then he's still wheeling and dealing with Sophia you know it's just like how do you switch gears like that and that's how this guy's doing it honestly I mean I still like the show and I'm very interested to see where the rest of the season goes but mm -hmm. because I mean he's I like the penguin in this in any Batman iteration I've seen for the last number of decades, going back to the 60s, it's like, here goes a nefarious supervillain. Oh, fuck him, right? Go Batman. But now I'm like, I'm with you, Penguin, man. Do what you got to do, all right? It's a hard world in Gotham. Kill your way to the top if you got to. Like, I'm like, I support you. Like, he's the good guy, but he's the bad good guy. 
I don't okay, I don't agree with the statement that Penguin seems like a good guy, but he doesn't seem like a villain. No, mm-hmm. he's a villain. Somebody who is manipulating, underhanded, fucking conniving, is this all for power. Scheming. Mm-hmm. That is that's villainous behavior. That's villain type behavior. It's he's not literally awesome. textbook villain, yes. yes. <laughs> If you he's look him villain. up, he's a, he's a registered Batman villain. So yeah, he's, he's villain. Not, but he's a villain. He's a fucking villain. He's like he basically ripped Victor from his family and be like, nah, you ain't going back. You ain't got, got no family now. I'm your family. Got his friend killed. <laughs> like, he is a villain. Like yeah. men is straight up villain. But um, and I'm interested to see where they take this or where the rest of this season goes. But mm-hmm. to me. And I'm going to watch it because I like it. But to me, it just does not feel like com- DC comic. It feels much more darker, grittier, grimier. It oh, yeah. is. It, it feels nothing to do. Like, I don't understand how they would work the Batman back in. I would be annoyed at this point if I saw Batman like like whooshing over and you're like, God damn it, Batman, come on, leave him alone. Penguin's just trying to trying to get by. Yeah. <laughs> no, what like, I like or, about it, go or, ahead. Or how are they gonna work in the rest of the characters? Like they did the police they did they, they did the police captain and now he's a drug addict. Okay, fine. How are you gonna work in some other classic characters? And when they work when they are worked in, if they are worked in I mean, is it going to completely blow our minds on the iterations of the characters that we had in our heads before because of, you know, different different um, Batman movies that we've watched? Yeah. Like, it's not, it's it's completely not this, it's not teenage, young adult DC. This is a very adult DC. And it's so adult, and DC is so masked in it, that if you weren't aware that the Penguin was based off of the Batman in a DC comic book, you'd watch this, not even having any, not even thinking that. If you weren't aware, mm-hmm. this wouldn't tell you. Like we needed four Batman. decades of Batman movies yeah. for you to have watched them, grown up with them, and now you're grown ass man, adult, and you need something more. You need some. I need some grittiness. I need. I now I need some more stories, and that's what this is. Like you couldn't. Like you needed the other ones to to appreciate what this is. Right, but if you didn't know that the other ones existed, yeah, you would not be able to tell that it even existed by watching this. No, and it's How wonderful. It is, and. Can I? I want to go back because because a lot of this episode was about Sophia. This is yes, Sophia in this her. world. Like she's a very oh my goodness, played by Kristen Melody. Hell yes! What I love is because again, it's this is Penguin, so it's obviously a main man character. So Penguin in the beginning is like um, it's like hey, you know what's I so we had to go through all that, you know, like we'll find your brother's killer, you and me would do that, whatever. Hey, you know, those guys they don't respect you. You know, I, I get it, I get what you're doing. It's a hard business, they you know. If you ever want to work together, crazy. Yeah, they get and crazy, but no, no, I get it. You're doing what you gotta do, you know. Uh, you know, and he, and he just sprinkles his grain and she's like, Okay, whatever, fuck off, buddy, and then you know, does her own thing. But then you get to watch her interact with other people not like uh, just other henchmen and shit in the you know in the underground criminal world like people of of her class level because she's yeah. rich like she's known she's what do you a socialite you know she's up there but she's got a rep um namely for being i think was it the hangman serial killer i'm still haven't got the whole full thing unveiled oh, yet. Man, yes. Yeah, yeah, the color of the hangman. And so you see how other people react to her. First of all, straight up, no eye contact. I wasn't just looking at you now that you just turned your head and saw me looking at you. Or you get this one woman like that used to be her best friend who's actually really nice to her and then seems to be, you know, like, Oh yeah, we should get together some da 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 whatever. And then it's like, Oh, is that is that your daughter? Like, get the fuck away from my daughter. Like and then she's like, Okay, there it is. That's how you truly feel about and like and you see her get batted around by society because they don't trust her um and you feel bad for her but then you're like i mean she is kind of a, kind of a psycho killer uh, no, I, don't. I, see, I see a woman that's suffering from post-traumatic stress complex ptsd yeah that, yeah yeah that. And, and then um and then and you get this doing very well and then you get this beautiful heartfelt 
moment at the funeral of the guy the penguin killed, but he didn't know that. Um, and then he comes in there and he's uh, he's, uh, he's like, yeah, I remember. And he tells this heartfelt story about his mom, about, you know, he lost his two, uh, two brothers, whatever. She was going through hell. They were both going through hell. And then one day, you know, she takes him to go go see some jazz, some live music. First time he ever saw a performance. And they dance, whatever. And he said that was a twist. He was like, ah, oh, you know. Uh, um, uh, and then that clicked for Sophia of like, how do you get over this anger and hate and pain? And she and he was like, you got to keep dancing. You know, you got to get yeah. out there. Yeah. Okay. So there, there was that kind of moment. Yeah. Obviously, it was a just... kind of heart reaching out moment. And that was, you know, and then, and then again, Sophia still wasn't fully on board, but she was like, that was really nice. I, ca- I no. actually kind of needed that. And then she got knocked around again by the family. And then she meets up with them later. And she's like, I want to fucking dance. I want to take know? all those motherfuckers out. And I'm just like, yes. If they had, well, because her uncle was trying to send her away. Yeah. Her oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go off to her Italy. Go nice relax. Her uncle was nicely suggesting that she go to Lake Como. Mm-hmm. So it just gave her the impetus. Not like, I don't, I think. Sophia Falcone is um, the character is smart enough to realize when she's getting played. Oh yeah, and obviously oh, yeah. she sees the penguin playing her, but because her uncle tried to sweep her under the rug, now she sees a purpose for him, and she's willing to buy in. He's a useful to tool all, to all of what he was spinning to her. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, the climax point is going to come when she that character eventually finds out that the penguin is the reason for her brother's death. Maybe. Then it's going to be who's going to survive. Is it going to be the penguin, Oz? Or is it going to be Sophia? And you know, in that world, the only way you survive is kill or be killed. Yep. So and we're going to see what happens when we get to that episode. But... Mm. I'm loving it. And, and there was another subtle thing because I was just, you know, having to refresh myself on the episode before we did this. Um, whenever he was talking to her, or whatever, um, talking to Sophia, having that moment, you know, it's like, oh, when you went out to his whatever. And then he, Penguin was smart enough to sneak in. And you have to, re, you have to rewatch it because he says it. Um, and uh, she was like, how did, you know, Sophia asked her, like, how did your mom move on? She's like, well, you know, I'm, uh, you know, she, you know, she just learned she had to keep going. You know, you know, she passed a few years ago, but I always remember you. Know, she always used to be real strong about that. He dropped that nugget of just like, yeah, my mom's dead. My mom's dead. Don't go looking for her. You know, and so just enough to cover that ass. I'm like, cover his ass, you know, cover his family's ass because he's out there. Like, nobody needs to know that his mom exists, whatever. I love that Penguin's smart enough to do that. Do like, I don't what? trust Sophia enough to with the, with the knowledge that my mom's still alive. Beyond the character development, which was great, beyond the acting, which is great, there it, it is really, the show is really good and it's a quality show because of the filmmaking itself. I'm not sure if you caught it, but there is a, there's a moment uh, off the beginning when Victor was following behind um, Oz and they're heading mm-hmm. to the apartment to meet the girls and Victor catches sight of a flyer and it's a missing person flyer but there's three flyers on that pole so you don't know who they're talking about but because the camera stopped to turn around and look at it you know it that it's an important it's an important thing and it's going to come up somehow later on mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like Thing, that moment where Oz was telling Sophia, yeah, my mother's died, she's she's passed on. Things like that, the little nuggets and the crumbs that they leave us to say, okay, this is going to be something major in a, a couple of a few episodes down the line. Don't forget that this happened. I think that adds to the overall quality of the show that we're watching. These yeah. People were very considerate and very deliberate in every aspect, in every department of making this show. Mm. Costumes, makeup, wardrobe, prosthetics, writing, uh, cinematography, production design. It is a very deliberate and intricate show. And for that, I want to see it. Yeah. How they got away. And this is maybe similar to the acolyte, where um, where the acolyte went on a complete bender away from what Star Star Wars was about. Uh-huh. But how they got away with saying that okay, this is going to be um a story about a DC comic character, and it's not going to be DC comic at all. It's going to be something completely different. I don't know, but they approved it, and the difference between 
this show and the show I just mentioned is that this show is doing it well. Yeah. And they have incredible actors. Incredible. And not to say the shows, the actors on the Acolyte weren't good. They were very good. Um, but I think that franchise just has people that fan of a fan base that is just more stick to what we know type of fan base. Whereas DC, the DC's fan base, they're kind of, they were introduced to this organized crime lifestyle with Gotham, the original show. Mm -hmm. So they may be a little bit more open to it. I well, I, if you get fans out there who have uh, uh, subscribed to us, will know um, we had a I had opinions on Acolyte. Um, the difference of between that one is, I would say, not that Star Wars fans weren't wanting to have something new, something different brought up, or, or a different perspective put on there, because we've proven Rogue One, um, um, the uh, Andor, all that, whatever, giving new perspective. That wasn't it. Acolyte was just poorly written. Uh, it just didn't have good writing, and it just and it, it, and it there was and it just just seemed to not really be cohesive put together. This is cohesive. This is put together. Even the see the scene earlier, whenever it's like, okay, he's working with uh, uh, the Malone um, the Malones uh, to screw over the Falcons for this shipment, but then like uh, the Falcons get uh, get paranoid about something else, and so it screws over his plans, and then so Penguin now has to quickly like turn. Who am I shooting now? Whatever I got. Got confused in that scene of how that all kind of played out and who was going to get, but who who got shot, who didn't, who's getting blamed, how he's going to do this. But I had faith in the story enough to know that it would actually make sense in the end, and it did. It has good fidelity. It it doesn't lead you too far out because Ping was having to do mind tricks all the time about keeping track of storylines and how can I plant this to blame this guy? Do you think they're going to blame this guy to blame this guy and Plan B's whatever? It's enough to where even if you do get lost you trust that it it does actually make sense and then after you watch the episode your brain processes you start putting things together like oh yeah you know what that did make sense he did that or whatever there's fidelity to it and it doesn't insult the viewer and that's what this show does well is hey um, it's not going to be too complex that, that you can't follow it, but it's it's true to itself. And hey, this is the sandbox we're playing, and we're not going to bring in anything extraneous to make it seem stupid or whatever. Um, but we're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna things are things are done because each character does each action for a reason, and we don't betray that. And that's what I like about the penguin so far in episode two. It's really well done. Yes, it's really well make... done. It lets yeah. the characters play, and it doesn't take anything for granted. Out of one, a scale one to ten for episode two. If we, as the producers, love to put things on a linear scale of it was complete shit to it was complete awesome, we can't just live in a world of this episode was wonderful. It didn't betray episode one. Um, I mean, am I gonna wait? Do I have to say like episode one was ten and then this is has to be nine or like I don't know how do I? I mean, if we're gonna ju judge that, I mean, eight, nine. Seven. Ten, seven? Sure. I mean, was it, it was as... Because I was expecting to see more dc if yeah. stuff, but... I mean, I want to see some more Sophia's backstory, you know? I want to see more of that, but I mean, I'm not going to fault it because it's it's an episode that's got to lead to the next episode, and it's doing well for her. But I mean, I was not disappointed by this, but uh, you know what? I'm going to... Let's go with seven and a half, eight? Sure. Seven and a half. Seven sure. and a half. Seven and a half. Oh. I'm a little bit tougher because I was just like, where are my superheroes? But yeah. yeah. And the first episode, nine. Easy nine. Nine yeah. and a half. Easy nine. If I want to think more of it, would be higher. Um, yeah. No qualms with uh, with episode one. Yeah. No qualms with episode I two. And shortly after this, I plan on making a bowl of soup because I made soup. I wasn't able to eat soup. I'm going to eat that bowl of soup and watch episode three. Yeah. No, I'm going to get that sort from, of, you know, I'm, in, I'm kind of low-key in love with this series so. yes loving it at the same time i am watching the boys um i i took a break for a week or so i am watching uh ring of power the lord of the rings uh series um each one of these there's some moments where i'm like what are we doing what's going on here guys let's move this along with the penguin i i don't look away from the screen I don't look at my phone. I don't go run off to go refill my drink, whatever. If I do, I'm pausing it because I, I give it 
it's one of those shows that deserves your attention. And I appreciate a show that does that, that says, you know what? I'm just going to. And to catch. I'm in. You know? And to catch the little things, to catch the little details that they've planted in there for us, you need to give it your full attention. There are subtleties enough where it's like, it's not so much where like, hey, here's 15 Easter eggs for each episode, whatever. But like, it's enough of like nuggets to, for you to pick up on if you pick up on it. If not, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You'll get it later. You know, and it's good. Well done. Very good. Hey, viewers, what do you think so far of The Penguin? Episode two um, compared to episode one. Where are you at in the storyline? What are you thinking about this? Um, also, give us a little dig on Echolite while you're down there. But um, we're going to keep watching this uh, this series because we're enjoying It's a mini series. It's fun. The thing I love about mini series, too, my wife is the same way of like, it has to, it's one encompassing story. It's not like they just have to like, uh, I don't know, let's string along a second season somehow. No, it's like, it's each episode serves a purpose. Cause they know you're not going to, you're only going to get Colin Farrell for so long. And it's an all encompassing story. And it's already seems like it's all fleshed out and it's just being unveiled a little it's bit. As per- good as the Watchmen. As good as the Watchmen. Oh, it's like, you know, it's, um, what do you call it? It's a, the, like an advent calendar where it's like each episode is you just scratching off a little bit more, just getting a little bit more story, just a little bit more. It's yeah. wonderful. I love it. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I'm into it. Uh, so guess what? Um, yes. Before we go, before we leave, and okay. we ask you to like and subscribe and comment and do all the things on our videos. Or is it? It's usually also, right here going mm-hmm. to let you know that sooner or later yes probably more sooner than later we are planning to do a watch along watch and along i personally want to know which show would you like to watch along with us too show or movie show or movie show or movie you you guys decide show or movie what do you think yeah exactly i'm watching the tulsa king personally hey. right now. how is that I liked season one better than I like what they're doing on season two. Uh, I don't like it on the basis that it makes you it makes Tulsa sound interesting, which uh, it is not. Tulsa, you Oklahoma is not it's not interesting. Louisville. How dare you? Yeah, I went to Louisville, Kentucky this weekend, and that is a fantastic city, by the way. Okay, Hi, so we'll anybody out there from Louisville, I have questions about your town. Why is it so clean? Why is it so wonderful? Why is it so welcoming? What are you doing? Are there bodies buried underneath this town? Um, but Louisville, Kentucky, What's wonderful. Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, drive through. Just drive oh through. Oh my god! That Don't is even bother Tulsa, scary. Oklahoma. Yeah. That is- so discriminatory. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm anyway. a proud Texan talking shit about Oklahoma. It's what we do. It's who we are. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I liked what they did in season one. Season two, I think they're trying to make it a little bit more lighter, a little bit more comedic. And I'm just, uh, I don't know. Jerry's it's like, how do you like, dial back from that? Like, once you, how do you go so in heavy, serious, and then dial it back, you know? I like the toughness of season one. And I don't know. But. Elspeth is another series that I'm into right now, too. I'm watching that. Um, I'm about to watch The Bear. But yeah, no, it'd be interesting. The Bear. The bear. Um, it'd be interesting to know what you people. Um, in you people. In YouTube world. You viewers. Think okay. That we should do a watch along to movie, yeah. television show. What's interesting you nowadays? And then, yes, after that, uh, after that comment, you like and subscribe yeah we thank you we appreciate it. it means a little click to you means a whole bunch to us um yes. all right um as always this is critic box where we just chat and gossip um about tv movies acting shit and stuff um my name is jared this is andrea um we no one mentioned defecating at all in this not episode. actual defecation i mean you know just shit yeah just shit 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 the shit you know anyway so um yeah. let us know what you think about stuff uh we'd love to talk about stuff and things and hit us up in the comment section like subscribe all that fun jazz i think i've said that 15 times already sorry uh we're watching the penguin but we're also going to watch anything that we like uh and anything you, you like anything you suggest let us know um i'm going i i plan on soon re-watching mozart but you know what i can't actually you know what i thought about because you know what month it is it's october that's a horror month um, that's the month that i rise and shine which I, by the way i finally watched front door Oh, sorry, no, Front Room. Front Room with the A24 oh, yeah. movie, Front Room. Yeah? Fun. What do you think? Fun movie. 
recommend it. Uh, we're not going to do a whole review episode of it just because that is just, uh, we don't need to do it for every movie. But um, I'm just going to say that Brandy, good to see her again. But the real star of the show is um, Catherine that Hunter. White lady? The, that old white Catherine Hunter is the reason to watch it. She Her performance is amazing. I told you she leaned in. Oh, you watched it too? Show. You saw the front room? No, I haven't seen it, but I I wanted to, I wanted to watch it. I love Brandy. Girl, yes. Catherine Hunter, fucking on fire. Okay, that's why I wanted to watch it. She that's thought, why you she, should watch it. She leaned in. She's like, I'm jumping. Oh, she is I'm, a physical actress, and she yeah. is, and she's only sixty-seven, but they made her look a lot older. But oh, good wow. God, like, oh, her acting was phenomenal. Great, great. Okay, Everything now, she says. Recommend it. The Front Room, May 24. Anyway, it's horror month, baby. It's my favorite month. I love it. Oh, I'll keep you up to date on all the horror movies. Ma- I'll keep you up to date on all the horror movies that I watched throughout this month. Some of them are going to be good. Some of them ain't. Um, but that's what I love about horror. You know, horror is a, mo- is a thing. You can either be one star or five star, and it's going to be the best <laughs> time in the world. Three and a half star in the middle? Actually, not that great. That's just how horror movies work. It's weird. Yeah. Anyway, so... Anyways... This- very long-winded goodbye. Cause... Long and on this ten-minute goodbye closing of this episode, uh, we'll see you next time here in Critic Box. So. All right, bye guys. Bye. <laughs>